brilliant ideas powered by Hyundai Motor. He's one of the amazing artists of our time. He keeps inventing new amazing experiences. An assortment of video, color, and sound. Anne-Marie Saller's work demands your attention. Isn't that right? It's because of how he films, how he creates his works. The attention he pays to the lighting, to the camera work, to editing, to sequencing. Striving for communication that goes beyond the limits of language. And Ray really works with music, with video, drawings, photography, with uh, many things. His exhibitions challenge the viewer to question politics, music, and history. He trusts the intelligence and the ability of his audience to create their own story. My way is to heed for something that I don't know yet how to resolve. So there is a, that there will be a risk taking, and this is also what keeps it exciting. Although his art can take a variety of forms, from documentary <laughs> to live performance, it's Henry's ability to manipulate sound that makes his work unique. One of the reasons I got interested in sound and music versus language is to open up the possibility of communication through other means. So that it's for the viewer and the listener to decide upon the, a given meaning or, or a given way of the interpretation of a situation. And me, by, by talking about this, I just give my own version of it. Henri's fascination with video and sound was immediately clear in his breakthrough work, Into Vista, a film he made while he was still a student. The amazing thing with Henri was that from the get-go, from this very first um, appearance of his in the international art world with Into Vista, it was already all there. His language was there. This wasn't the work of a, of a young emerging artist. This was the work of an accomplished artist. The film is itself a journey driven by sound, or rather, the lack of sound, after Anri finds an old recording of his mother speaking at a political conference without audio. For many, it just boiled down to a kind of narrative, a very surprising narrative, about an artist finding an old tape, but formally the work was much more complex. The film, like many of his early works, is intimately tied to the political history of Anri's native country. Albania. By November 29th, 1944, communist subversion under Red Leader Anvo Hoxha results in only one governing party being recognized in Albania. Throughout much of the 20th century, Albania was under the thumb of the repressive communist dictator Enver Hoxha, who imposed a strict censorship on Western art. In the education curriculum, in the art school, anything in terms of art history and references, everything from Impressionism and on was completely forbidden, so not to be seen or only to be spoken about very briefly as a critique uh, against them. Enlisting the help of deaf people to lip read, Anri recovers his mother's words and shows her the result, opening up a window into her and her country's past. She was very surprised to see how unarticulated the interview sounds. And this happened because uh, I believe the language was so much uh, stiffened uh, in order to, to serve the, the, the ideology of the regime that if you hear it 25 years later, 
you 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 are amazed and 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 saddened at the same time by the by the stiffness of the language. Ishte shum e qart për arsye se pas parimet kësaj lufte I was completely fascinated by the way he handled uh, the question of memories, how memories work in someone's life. And it was really about language, it was about the different language that Anri's mother has in the late 90s from the language she had in the 70s, the way that language in a way makes our experience. This film signalled the beginning of Amri's desire to find a language that was immune to the manipulation of words. I think what happened was of a losing of interest for the words and language as a means of communication, a distrust. I think Intervista was like a, a, an important moment of, of realising this, of not trusting language. Uh, of, of the opaqueness of the language and the, how it controlled. And in Dami e Kalori, made five years later, it was the power of colour rather than language that provoked political optimism in Albania. The film follows the former mayor of Tirana, Edi Rama, now the democratically elected prime minister, and his project to paint the decaying, war-torn buildings in vivid colours. <laughs> It was very interesting at the beginning there was resistance, but little by little people started to actually see that it created this whole new energy, a lot to do with the energy, a positive energy uh, in Tirana. And Henri created an amazing film, which again, you know, his films are never documentaries. It's not, he did not just merely document. I mean, the film is very much in itself a painting. It's filmed sometimes at night, sometimes in the day. It zooms in on some people who seem totally forgotten by this process of transforming Albania. And it also focuses on some of the wonderful uh, murals themselves. So this is a work that deals in a very specific way with the politics of uh, Tirana and with a political campaign by Tirana's mayor. So this was clearly an attempt to 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 reconnect, to re-inspire in the people the importance of what we share, what we have in common. The only way of bringing it was by doing in a way that completely bypassed language. And the colors had this quality to impact the immediate life of the people with very, very little means and resources. But it would prove to be the language of sound that would dominate Anri's later works. After the break, we'll see Anri prepare for one of his most ambitious exhibitions so far. Henri Sala willfully works around the edges of language, preferring to use music as a form of communication. And this is the case in his latest work, a sound and video installation for an upcoming solo exhibition in Berlin. It's a film which is about the relation between two very well-known songs, the Marseillaise, the French anthem, and the International, the Workers' anthem. What interested me most in the very beginning is how they are politically read, how they've been appropriated through history. For the international, it's a, it's a song which means so much about this, um, about commonness, about uh, 
defending common rights, but at the same time, in a given part of, in a moment of history, it was the anthem of the Soviet Union, so at the same time, could be rightly and easily perceived from people as the anthem of an oppressor at a given moment. It's a hugely ambitious project. The film will not only explore the history of these two pieces of music, but the music itself will actually dictate the focus of the camera. One element which was very important for me is how to, to have the, the music to take control of the filming, for example. It's the music that decides where the focus will be. So in a way, the, the, the music is not only playing for the ear, but is also directing the eye. This encapsulates Anri's use of music more than merely a soundtrack to his films. It's a main character actively participating in the film's narrative. This is perhaps best seen in Long Sorrow, where a jazz saxophonist, perched on what appears to be a balcony, plays over an endless modernist housing estate. Only as the film develops do we realize there's no balcony. I wanted to invite a musician to suspend him on the top floor of the building. It's a very long building. Uh, lang, it's called Lange Yammer, which a way to translate it is long sorrow. And somehow the music would become an extension to the architecture or something that would make the long sorrow even longer. I think Andre's interest in sound has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, it's one step away from language, because obviously language, we are now having a conversation and, you know, we're very much in control of the language we're using. And I think the thing Andre is interested in is that sound is kind of one step away from that. It's, it's, it's outside, somehow, our direct control. I'm interested in music because compared to language, is much more implicit. It has a way to convey without telling things. It produces narrative without storytelling. Anri uses sound to shed light on the locations in his films, many of which have controversial histories. Talate Lolco Clash is set in excavated Aztec ruins in Mexico City. But this was also the site where an estimated 300 students were killed by the Mexican military and police. Using a song that everyone remembers, but presenting a disjointed version of it, Henry alludes to the notion of historical memory. And in Answer Me, set in an old Cold War surveillance tower, a woman struggles to talk to a man who responds only with cacophonous drumming. That way things will be out in the open and we'll know what to do. Isn't that so? Answer me. One becomes aware that there is a crisis in this communication, and then, in a way, it echoes with the fact that the very building was, was, uh, was built for the eavesdropping, for intercepting communication in a moment of, of, a, of a political um, lack of communication uh, at the height of the Cold War. The history of nuclear facilities in parts of Germany or the history of Cold War architecture. So there is a kind of historical significance to some of the things that he deals with, but his interest in a wider cultural background for his work, uh, different musicians, different literary sources, that's also one of the things that makes him a very compelling artist. But more than just a setting, 
The architecture of the dome affects the conversation to the extent where it becomes a character in the film. I thought, what if I take two sentences and, and, uh, and stage them in that space where what will come across is the loudness of the silences between the words, because everything is so loud. So silence even is very loud within the geodesic dome of the place. And therefore, the space itself would be so present that it would become more important than the, than the characters in the, in the film. Answer me. One of his most critically acclaimed works, Ravel, Ravel, Unravel, was France's entry into the 2013 Venice Biennale, but it was exhibited in the German pavilion as the two countries swapped pavilions to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Elysee Treaty. Two compositions drift in and out of tempo, while in another room, a video plays of a DJ working tirelessly to re-sync the music. So you, as a viewer, think about your time, but you're not just thinking about the time of now, but different types of time. When was the recording made? When did Anne film the people recording it? Um, what's the history of the musician, the history of that song, the history of the composition, and so on? And he layers these types of time. The piece uses a score composed by a French man for a pianist who lost his hand fighting for the Germans in the First World War. Ravel, Ravel, and Ravel, and uh, the pavilion, it does represent definitely what has been interesting me in the past 10 years, the relation between space, architecture, sound, and, uh, and music, but also the, the context, the political context, the, where they come from. And it is laden with so many subtle connections to the history of Franco-German relations, it can be quite hard to unravel. It's OK. If someone doesn't see the political context, he will see something else. <laughs> I think uh, hard work, you know, is a multiplicity of experiences, and uh, we can elaborate our relation to an artwork in very different way. After the break, we get a rare glimpse into the precision and complexity that Anri's exhibitions have become renowned for. The Esther Schipper Gallery in Berlin may be a building site at the moment, but in a few weeks, it'll be transformed into Anri Saller's latest exhibition. Called Takeover, Anri is famous for creating immersive experiences like this. The, the project is conceived as being a pair because it's two films which are playing on each side of a screen which is in the middle of a space. So what we are doing here is to make sure and to bring to the full potential of this musical relation between the, the two and also deal with the aspects of the acoustics of the space. And Anri is meticulously fine-tuning the audio, a process that can take over a week. I think we will be a little bit more soft, if it will fill more the room. Mixing is one of my favorite moments when I work because it's the moment when you push the potential to its completeness. When I go to the attack, I will not release the note. Henri's understanding with Olivier, his trusted sound engineer, is almost instinctive. With Olivier, we've been working for 18 years together, so it's, it's, it's like a continuous pleasure, and every time we can, we can go further. And là, on ne les a pas suivis encore. De l'autre côté, on a suivi vis-à-vis -vis de l'écoute d'ici, mais ici, on n'a pas suivi encore vis-à-vis -vis de l'écoute de là-bas. Ouais, ouais. It's very interesting because he's someone so interested by sound, so for a sound engineer, <laughs> it's really a great privilege to work with him, for sure. We are searching on each project um, new ways for uh, listening to the sound. 
the sound is very important, is very often like the trigger of a, of a narrative or a story. So we anticipate and we discuss about how to record things, how to approach the thing. When Henri puts a group of, of works together, he isn't only thinking about an image, a projection. He's not just thinking about the viewer sitting in front of a film passively, watching it and then leaving the space. He wants the whole experience of architecture and time to count and to work on the viewer. The way that Andre has worked with the space is very special. As a visitor, you're like, you're like free to go where you, where you want to go and, and, and you, can make, you can really make your own exhibition. And this movement is fundamental to the artwork, the viewer's physical position in the gallery altering the sounds that they hear. So this is a bit like a 360 degrees space in terms of the bots, in terms of the space, the volume, but also the sounds, uh, meaning that there is a different portion of the sounds that one listens to depending on where, where one is in the space. So for example, in relation to this side, the piano will hear more the higher pitches. And then if one goes on the other side, you hear more the, the lower pitches. And one is in the middle, you hear more than the middle octave. And somehow it's the listener and the viewer who who edits, depending on where one chooses to be, adds another layer to the editing of the sound. This produces more awareness about where one is in the space. Wherever you stand, you're going to have a different experience. This is something that I respect a lot about Andri. Is he trusts the intelligence and the ability of, of, of his audience to, to create their own story. His films are never kind of like overwhelming. The viewer is somehow diminished. I think with Andre, it's the opposite. The viewer is not diminished at all. The viewer is somehow encouraged to do something. He somehow, he or she, is very much participating. This interaction has become synonymous with Andre's exhibitions. Recently, at the Serpentine Gallery in London, Long Sorrow made another appearance. But this time, Henry enlisted a second saxophonist to improvise live alongside the video. Because I think the saxophone player played several thousand hours during the exhibition at the Serpentine every single day. And I think that's why Henry is so important and why Henry is so successful and why he's so influential in the art world. Exhibitions are an opportunity to create extraordinary experiences and Henry is a master at that. Salas' films are more than just visually beautiful. They're imbued with complex layers of politics, language, and history. Yet, Henri's most enduring mark on contemporary art may be in the medium of the exhibition, drawing his audiences in with arresting experiences. He'll think, how do I turn art from being a, a place for entertainment into a place for real uh, thought? It's this capacity of merging different disciplines in a very original form that make Henri Salah's work particularly special. Henri was a wonder kid. He always was a wonder kid. What I wish for is that as time passes by, to still be able to keep this necessity, that if you do things, you do them because deep inside there is a necessity to do it. Brilliant Ideas, powered by Hyundai Motor.